Hello everyone, Paul here. Today I'm going to talk about using the strategy that I've been talking about for the last couple of days and we're going to we're going to apply it to using the stock market under the 5 minute. Now this strategy is for those that can, you know, sit by the computer and look at the charts more often than what I talked about yesterday. With the, this with doing it on the 5 minute, you have to pay attention to the charts more than you do with you know, with doing it with the hour which is what I did yesterday. But what I'm gonna go over today is kind of just a small little tweak that I did. It's the same formula, but I just wanna show you how to kind of co to condense everything uh, to make it, you know, on your screen so it do doesn't look so cluttery. But it's the same, same indicators, it just won't look as cluttery. Uh, so you need 1348, uh, you're doing it on the five minute, Pick whatever stock you want. Do it on a five minute. You gotta, you gotta have your 13 and your 48. Uh, I don't have mine. On, well, I don't have it listed on here, but these lines are the 1348. So the next thing you're gonna need is you're going to need your relative strength index. Actually, though, first we're gonna do the trend meter, trend meter, and then we're gonna do the relative strength index. Now, if you you can use it this way if you want to, but if, if you notice here, there's there's like there's too much space on my phone, you know, especially for making these videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge my trend meter in with my RSI, and basically, and basically the next thing you do is you just move it to you'll move it to your RSI, and it will collapse in itself. I think I got the wrong. Uh, for the trend meter, it is the all it's the all trend meters now align. That's the one we needed. Okay. So what we basically do, it's pretty simple. Now that we have the indicator, it's really easy to see when you do it like this. What you want to do, and like I said in yesterday, we're gonna focus on the five minute for those that can be on your screen. You want to look for the moments of when the 1348 is crossing and Okay, there you go. I got everything back. You see, it just makes it a little bit more cluttery, though. But anyway, you can see there. I have the thirteen. I have the thirteen forty-eight. That's the lines here, and then I have my um, I have my RSI and my trend uh, meter. So those are the ones you need. So what you basically want to do is you want to look for the moment when. Uh, you want to find the moment when the 1348 is crossing, but you want to find you want to find the moment that it's crossing, but you want to get in a little bit before. So you have to look you have to look and see your trend meter will print out usually it will usually print out a dot, and that that's the trend meter. It usually will print it out before the 1348 crosses. So you really have to look for the dot, the the red dot or the green dot before more. Uh, the 1348 has to look like it's crossing, and then you, you'll you'll spot the you'll usually spot the trend meter indicator first, and then it usually will cross. But sometimes it it will come out with the 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 dot and the 1348 crossing at the same time. Uh, but the first thing you want to look for is the trend meter printing out a red or green dot, and that is the indication. To get in at that point, but even though it is indicating it, you still need to pay attention to your RSI and where everything is because it's not, you know, it's not a hundred percent. So you know, none, none of these indicators are a hundred percent. So anyway, let's get a couple examples here of what what we would do in a situation. Okay, so this is the five minute. So right here we have the green candle, I mean not the green candle, the, uh, the dot that the trend meter has printed. And what I would do, what I would do in this situation is I would come in at this point because it looks, it, if we look at the RSI we could see the purple line is above the yellow line. So it looks like it's going to cross, you know, if you were doing this, you, you zoom in closer you would see from this point, it's not crossed yet, but it looks like it's going to cross. There are moments when it looks like it's going to cross, but it doesn't cross. 
this looks like it's going to cross, and every indication you have makes it look like it's going to cross up. So this is a good point of getting in. So what I would do in this situation is I would get in on a four, around a 404 call at this point, and I'd get in here, and then I would just follow, I would look at the RSI, and let's just do it from here, since I don't have the screen for it, but you, you, if you look at your RSI, you can tell that it goes all the way up, and you know you can have a good indication of when it's going to start going down, because the RSI starts dipping, so you have a good idea of when to get out. But this move right here is 0.188, so that's that is, in 40 minutes, 1.88 times 50. He made 94 bucks. So this formula alone could probably make you about $100 a day. A bare minimum of $100, $150 a day doing one contract with SPY. But let's look at a couple other examples. Uh, now doing it on the five minute, your gains, you, you're either going to be on a pattern that is small or you're going to catch it in a, a big trend. So let's look at this one real quick. So we got our cross happening right here. Our, our trend meter prints out a red dot right there and that's before, this is before it starts crossing. It's before the 1348 crosses. So right here would be when I get in and this is before the cross, so you get just a little bit more gains. On this point right here, I would do a 405 put, and I would write it out. If we look at the RSI in the bottom, we'll see, we can see when it's gonna start heading back up, cause it shows down there below. You see when it starts going back up and passing back through the, um, uh, the RSI. So this point right here, well this one's just, this one isn't even one, so it's, this one's a small gain. It's under, this is like 50 or maybe somewhere in there. Not a lot of gain there, but it still gains. So what we want to do, we, let's look for, let's look for another moment. Let's do, now, what you want to avoid though is the moment the stock market opens. I do not, I do not do my plays. It, uh, when the 1348 kind of like crosses right at the open of the market, I don't focus on those because, you know, anything could change in that moment. It's just five minutes. So I, I don't focus on the first opening minutes of market because because anything could happen at that moment. I wait a little little bit more and see what happens. Uh, I don't, I don't, if it's crossing, if the 1348 is crossing, I don't do that play. I wait, I wait till it passes later on in the day because you'll get more accurate results. So anyway, let's go to right here. You can see right here if it's crossing up, but let's just make double, make sure that this isn't two different days. Okay, so we got November 30th, November 30th. Okay, so this is the same day. So this would work well. This would work. So let's see if we can find a green dot that takes place before before it could merges, before the 1348. So we see the green dot right here. If we look close, it's before it merges. So you could get in right about here and you would do a 394 call and just ride this out. If you look at the RSI, you'll know that it, the trend is going up. So you can sell right about here. And this move here is, it's about an $8.74 difference in price. That is 8.74 times 50. That is 4.37 in one hour and 50, 15 minutes. So. You can make small gains doing it on the five minute, or you can do big gains doing it on the five minute. I, I like doing it really personally on the longer time frames because I can't always be looking at the, at the charts, but the five minute you can definitely make, you can definitely find all those moments. 
Here's probably a small gain right here, and I bet you it picks it up. You'll notice that the there's a green bar, a green dot that prints out right here. It's before it crosses. It's before it crosses. So, what I would do in this situation is I would buy a 394 call from this point, and then I would write. If you look at the RSI, you'll see that it's above everything, so you know you're in gains. And you'll notice the RSI. It starts dipping, so you'll know that the, the price is going to start going down. So this one is a one uh, one twenty two difference in price. So if we did one point twenty two times fifty, that's sixty one dollars. Small gain. You can make a little small gains or big gains with doing it on a five minute. I'm gonna do this two more times, and I think you guys get the general idea on how to do it with the five minute. Uh, Okay, so let's see. Did I do this one? Okay, yeah, I don't think I did this one. So we see the re the red dot right here from the trend meter. And if we position it, it prints out right before it crosses down. So at this point, I would do a 395 put, write it out, and basically if you look at the RSI in the bottom, You'll see that it is a you, you'll you will be able to tell when it when it starts going back up. I would I basically would get out here. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I, I personally I wouldn't wait it for over here. I, I would get out right here. So this is a one dollar eleven cents, one point eleven fifty. So you made fifty five dollars there. Small gain. Let's do it one more time. Uh, I want to try and find a good one here. And you can see that this is, if you do this strategy, it's pretty accurate. Occasionally, you'll find moments when it doesn't work, but it, it, that's very, very rarely. And that's because it changes so fast. But, you know, you can't really predict. And I, uh, if you're doing uh, options, I would suggest anybody to... Um, not do your full balance to do only like 10% of your balance uh, because you could hit those moments you could hit those rare moments where it doesn't work but I haven't really found any while making these videos but anyway let's just look at okay so this is an example of what I was saying I, w I if we look at this right here this is November 28th and the next day was 25th. So this is something I wouldn't do because this is uh, right on market open, and I, you know, I, I try waiting it out. I don't when if it crosses on the open, I don't focus on it because anything anything could happen. That's when all the the whales are there controlling everything. At the way to settle down a little bit before you start getting in, and uh, I do that th when the 1348 crosses kind of later later in the day. But the sideways over here. Let's see. Let's find a good one. Okay, so we see that it crossed right here. Let's make sure that this isn't November 23rd, November 20. Okay, so there, this is a moment that I would get in. Okay, so the first thing we want to look for, uh, we want to look for the trend meter, and it prints it out right here, right here, uh, right before it crosses. So you get in just a little bit early, and at this point we do a what's see what what what's the price right here? It's a four hundred dollar call, around a four hundred dollar call, and we basically just write it out. And if we look at the RSI, we'll see everything is gains, and we can see that it peaks right about here. So that's when I would get out, and that is a two dollar difference in price. So that's about a hundred dollars. So anyway, this is a very powerful strategy. If this is a strategy that I would do if you if you're at the computer and you're looking at your charts, because everything could change in in the five minute. You know, if you if you want to wait for longer periods, I personally will wait for do it on the hour and things like that. I wait for longer plays because I uh, I want to I want to hold my contract for at least two or three days. So. With the five minute, you kind of have to kind of keep looking at the looking at the charts. But anyway, 
uh, I hope this found you helpful uh, with this strategy. Uh, I'm probably going to go over one more time frame tomorrow. Uh, probably going to go over the four hour tomorrow because these are kind of like my favorite time frames. It's all personal preference. Yesterday I did the hour, today I did the five minute, and tomorrow I'm probably going to do the four hour because those are the, uh, the kind of the key time frames that I focus on. Anyway, I hope this uh, helped you guys. This is not financial advice. Uh, just uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in future videos.